Hello, this is Grant Abbott, and this is a tutorial of how I made this cart. It's an advanced tutorial, and it's part of the painting series that I have on my website, gabbit.co.uk, which has courses right through from beginner to advanced levels. So this is a tutorial. There'll be lots of time lapse within here, but I'll try and break down certain steps and sections that I think are important. I won't be going over the beginner steps, as I've got other tutorials on those, so do check those out. But I will be going into a bit more detail of how I paint and little tips and tricks as we go along. If you want to support me, I do have a Patreon. The link's in the description. And also I've got a Discord server if you want to chat or show off your work. There's lots of helpful people on there so you can join in the discussion. So these beginner sections I will rush through. This is 2000%. It still took me a little while to get through this because I wasn't sure how much detail to add for the sake of painting on top of because most of the detail is in the brush strokes, but of course you need the base there. So it's just basic shapes, extruding and loop cutting, and generally just blocks for a woody structure. I have cut sections out just to make this a bit quicker and easier to watch. Some sections were just a little bit repetitive. I've left my mistakes in as well, or where I've changed my mind. I have reference images off on my other screen and they sometimes influence me to change my mind and I look at one and then I look at another and I make different decisions as I go along and then I might look for another piece of reference and that gives me some ideas. In the past I've gone very low poly with my hand painted objects but I thought they were a bit extreme and especially the circular or cylinder type objects you can really see the edges and I thought I'd go for slightly higher poly this time so it has a bit more detail in the base mesh for painting on. I was going to do a sort of roof with a canopy, but I changed my mind. It kind of overcomplicated things and it didn't look quite right. Now one big mistake I made was not having my object centre right in the centre. When I came to paint later on, I couldn't use the symmetry tool on the brushes because it was slightly out. Now it's quite important as well though, not to have too much symmetry, otherwise it looks too uniform, especially something a bit organic like this. So it's fairly old and worn. So you don't always want absolute symmetry, but it could have really helped at times. I wasn't sure what to do with these rope sections either and they ended up being the weakest part of the model really. I did figure it out eventually and I was kind of testing out different techniques as well. So as you can see I've just used sort of blobs and I'm going to paint around those blobs with rope but the better method was the one I'm using now which is just extruding the cylinders. So you can see I've got the basic shape there and I'm happy with it. So I just did a simple smart UV project to have a basic UV layout. So here I've decided to slow down a bit, I'm only at 200% now and what I'm doing is I'm using the fill brush and filling the model in with different colours and then I'm using the S key to sample each of those colours. So I see what the colours look like on the model, then I hold down S, hover my mouse over the object and left click to add that to my palette. Now another important tip is whether to have smooth or flat shading on your model. Now I like to have flat shading so I can see the edges so I can mark in the lighter sections and I know exactly where the edges are but at the end I will want it to be smooth shaded. Your painted lines should end up being the sharp edges. Do remember to increase your bleed. I've got tutorials on all these little tips and tricks so to make sure you do have a look through those. Now I've speeded up again now because I'm just editing the shape a bit. I will re-unwrap in a second, but it doesn't matter at this point because I haven't truly coloured anything in. And now I'm slowly starting to add the base colours in. Now obviously it's mainly brown so I didn't dwell on that too much. And I've started to do the rope here. I'm doing a very basic start and I'm zoomed right in. Looks a bit rough but when you zoom out it's not too bad. And I've started on one of the pieces of wood. 
I'll slow down the process later on, but I think there's better examples later on, so I'll go through that later. And again, there is asymmetry in my model, so painting either side wasn't that bad. But ideally, if, if you want a quick workflow, then make sure your edit point is right in the center so you can use the symmetry button. Now I've slowed this bit down slightly and we're at 200% again because I want to show that it's important to hide parts of your model. So in edit mode you select a part, I used circle select. Once that part's selected you select the inverse so to select everything else by pressing ctrl I and then you can press H to hide. When you go back over into texture paint mode it will be out of the way and you can paint behind it. So you can get a rough idea of how I'm creating these wooden planks. There's quite a lot on here so I get better as I go along. And I figured out the best way was to draw lines with different colours from your palette. Occasionally I used the smudge tool in case they were too, too defined. And then you just go around the edges with either a screen brush or a lighter brush. The smear brush is quite good for cleaning up any rough patches. So you should be able to see my technique from this. Making those edges light as if they're worn. Now here I'm just tidying up the mesh a bit, it was slightly distorted when I tried to reposition it earlier. And again, the same technique with the wood, I'm using different colours for my palette, kind of just slapping them on, not completely randomly but fairly randomly in a sort of wood style. So I'm thinking about which way the grain goes of course and looking at my reference images. and then slowly build up the light parts, sometimes using a screen brush, sometimes just using a light brush. I've decided to slow this bit down so you can see how I've created one of these sort of notches or divots. I just get a dark brush, draw a fairly harsh line, and then round either side of that, I just lighten it up with a light brush or a screen brush. I'll show another example later on. Here I'm doing the same thing on the edges. I'm lightening them so they get a highlight. Because that's where they'd catch the light and that's where they'd get roughed up. Occasionally I go in with a multiply brush which darkens your image to highlight the dark areas. It's doing the same thing as ambient occlusion but it's sort of drawn in so where objects meet. So I've slowed the section down once more so drawing a dark line and then light lines next to it and then as you zoom out you can see they look like notches. And I was lazy here I did a mirror of the wheel, so it's an identical wheel on the other side. Also they're sharing UVs, that's not particularly good practice, especially if you want to bake or anything afterwards, but I didn't want this taking too long. So metal's a similar technique really. I've got a colour palette of bluey greys and I've just gone round brushing the darker colours with the brighter colours and highlighting the edges as if they're slightly shinier. It 
It was with this plank that I started to develop a technique that I was fairly comfortable with, and that was grabbing a few colours from the palette and using the smear brush and then going in with some more detailed lines. Then of course going around the edges with that lighter brush or the screen brush. I also created some notches in here. And you can see me using that technique again. Once again I've hidden parts of the mesh so I've just highlighted certain areas. For this one I did actually manage to use the mirror because this edit point was in the centre. It's quite a good object to practice with because it's got lots of similar shapes and similar colours. So repeating the same process over and over again, you get used to it and hopefully next time there's any wooden planks around, I'll be on the case. The whole project took five hours in total. Now this is where I paint these blobby rope bits and I don't think these work very well at all but it was good experience and I learned a lot from it. And I should have probably used more reference images at that point. I chose not to hide the whole mesh, this time I went to edit mode selected that one area by pressing L and that selects a sort of linked object. Then once that was highlighted then I could go back to textured mode. That would be the only thing that I'd paint on as long as I press the special button and I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description and in a card in the corner now. Now I've started to speed this up to 3000% because it's a very repetitive process. The only different thing that I'm doing is creating the planks by hand. So I'm putting a, a much darker line down the middle of these wider planks to give the illusion of some depth. Remember where you put dark lines you need a light edge next to it because that would be an edge that's exposed to the elements and would catch the light. Each of these sort of stick things was a bit of a long process and very laborious. So I've speeded those up. And the last thing that I thought I'd slow down is just creating the bolts. So I started with a base colour, then used a little highlight, then a dark colour to go around the edges and then got the multiply brush and just painted around each as if it had split the wood slightly. And you can see me going around doing the same process in different places. Lastly I added a plane and some of my sort of grass pack that I've already made and just placed those around in random locations. I'll probably do another tutorial later on how to create the transparent plane so wait for that if you're interested in painting. Hope you enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching.